Hello and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box, where today we're talking about one of the first pop songs, and certainly the first to really have huge, huge appeal internationally. Now, the origins of pop music were generally the late 19th century, and the reason why is that folk music was becoming commercialized, which meant that there was a whole industry that had sprung up where you could sell the sheet music, which was a huge business in the 19th and early 20th century. By the end of the 19th century, you also had what were called piano rolls, you know, the things that you would actually put in a player piano to play the music music of your choice. And player pianos were revolutionary and really popular at that time in both commercial settings and in home settings for those who could afford it, because it meant that without having to have any musical talent, or if you had musical talent, you could put the piano roll in the player piano and you could relax. It was the first version of the home stereo. And unlike early stereos, well, they weren't stereos then, but unlike early musical reproduction systems, whether wax cylinders or early shellac records that sounded really bad, the player piano sounded great because it was an actual living piano, a real piano, only it was being played mechanically rather than by a human. But the sound was the same sound of the real piano. And so, frankly, um, even though player pianos became less popular after the advent of electronic recording in the 1920s, you could really make an argument until that uh, sort of until magnetic tape came out, the player piano was the best way to get high quality sound in the home because it was a real instrument, which frankly is better than even a super great hi-fi system because you can't beat a real instrument. And the player piano was a real instrument, just not with a real performer. So that also helped this transition from the, the world of folk music into the world of stratified, professionalized, commercialized pop music. And this had begun in the 19th century. But in the early 20th century, in the year 1911, the biggest song <coughs> in the world, frankly, up to that point, was written by Irving Berlin. And this was Alexander's Ragtime Band. This song was huge player pianos, performances, sheet music for the home. Everyone wanted to hear this song. And it was it was catchy. <clears throat> it it um it played on the fact that ragtime as a genre, with Scott Joplin being the most uh, well known composer of the genre, it was becoming absolutely huge at that time. And Irving Berlin, one of the biggest songwriters who really helped to shape the way we think of pop music, he composed this, and the rest, as they say, is history. Now the song sort of hinted at things that would be part of the pop music discourse for good and for bad throughout the 20th century. One, there was the issue of non-Black musicians that were popularizing ragtime, which was a music that was essentially based on the Black American music of the 19th century, but turned into something that when commercialized was sold by artists who were not Black. Scott Joplin and Irving Berlin, most certainly not Black. So that was an issue. Uh, the other issue was that people thought that ragtime was a bit over-sexualized, even the kind of music that was made a bit more tame for the masses. And that was something that pop music has always been accused of. And then there was was the idea of the generation gap. Oh, you old people wouldn't understand Alexander's ragtime band. This is for us youngsters. So as you see, every generation in the world of pop music does have similar problems. Problems of authenticity when it concerns authorship and the origins of the music. Problems about who's going to get paid for what and where, who influenced whom, whom was the real author. Because there were some disputes over who wrote this song, but most do agree that Berlin did actually write it. But who was he influenced by? That's a whole bigger question. Youth versus age, sexuality versus manners and restraint. All of these issues have been a part of every pop musical genre. And while ragtime might seem really old-fashioned or even corny to us today, over a hundred years later, it was, in 1911, the latest, greatest thing. 
And frankly, if we didn't have Alexander's ragtime band mania, we might not have had the flapper mania of the 20s or the big band swing mania of the 30s or the crooner mania of the 40s or rock and roll around the clock, right? Uh, Bill Haley and Elvis mania in the 60s or Beatle mania in the 60s. Obviously, as we get closer and closer to our time, things seem more modern and relatable. But you could really say that it all started with Alexander's ragtime band for better or worse. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.